Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got yet another review um, for which I don't apologise because this is quite an interesting um, little instrument I think. It's the Zotec ZT5566 SE bench multimeter and it's a hobbyist meter uh, and it's got a few additional features which I think are potentially useful to, um, to hobbyists and probably students alike actually. So let's start by having a look at the box and then seeing what we've got. Okay so here's the meter um, currently in its box so let's um, just use the magic of filmmaking yet again and let's just okay by magic here is the meter and um, nice uh, chunky machine um, we'll talk about the front display in a bit um, there's some various uh, buttons on the back to do with mode power and doing some setting there's an input here on a mini USB um, which is for you well it'll run the meter but it'll also charge uh, the internal batteries in here there are two 2000 milliamp hour 18650 rechargeable batteries um, and they're, they're quite chunky batteries so I'm expecting it'll uh, run that for quite a while uh, you do get a mini USB lead um, for charging obviously it'll charge off any um, USB charger quite uh, as you might expect and uh, as well as that there's a manual which um, is quite readable uh, and quite a handy size uh, and it's got what's quite useful the full details of all the specs in there and then it talks about the various things you can do with them um, with the Bluetooth so let's uh, just quickly look at the leads now they're just pretty standard um, Chinese multimeter leads um, neither good nor bad they seem perfectly adequate for the hobbyist uh, and we've got the shrouded connections but just a note on the um, the positive lead so that's a completely normal connection on the negative lead uh, there's actually a, a the center pin and there's also a screen connection there um, more of that a little bit later on but that lead is slightly different to the normal negative lead and for a, for a very good reason so let's get switched on and let's um, let's do a bit of testing okay here's the Zotec switched on um, currently set um, to measure resistance uh, leads attached and um, first thing you can see I think fairly clearly is nice bright uh, large display something which I like very much now I'm not going to test every single feature on the multimeter I'll do resistance I'll do capacitance and I'll certainly do uh, frequency um, it, I've tried it out with voltage and current it seems absolutely fine uh, in the link uh, in the description uh, you'll be able to see the, the full spec so you'll be able to see uh, exactly what it does now um, one of the things it has got is a built-in Bluetooth speaker and I know when I've seen other reviews of uh, meters like this people have been quite critical of the um, Bluetooth and essentially have been saying well what do you need it for um, okay fair dues maybe you don't need it it's not really eating very much corn if you don't need it it just sits there quietly um, but certainly one possibility and something I've occasionally used it for is um, if you want to listen to your, to your favourite YouTube channel um, on your phone and you want don't want the uh, crackly um, quality of the uh, phone speaker then G'day and welcome back Today I've got a Philips radio it was made in the Netherlands or made in Holland actually and it's from about So this is uh, David Tipton's very very excellent uh, YouTube channel surely my favourite electronics channel on YouTube if you're not subscribed get yourself over there and do it that man is a craftsman and um, he's so mad he stick could be British um, I hope that doesn't offend him if he sees this it's not meant to um, but he'll um, frequently claim to not really understand things but uh, I happen to think he knows rather a lot about quite a lot so yeah um, that's a potential use for, um, for, for the Bluetooth if it's uh, if it suits you so let's have a look at um, resistance then and um, 
again you can look at the specs and see what what uh, it's claimed to do but it certainly claims to go up to about 200 mega ohm i haven't got anything anywhere near 200 mega ohm so let's start with this resistor here this is um 4.7 ohms and i'm getting yeah 4.8 well 4.7 4 there yeah 4.74 which is pretty good and this one which is uh supposed to be um uh, 8 point something mega ohms I've actually measured it with my LCR meter and I get to about uh, uh, 8.04, 8.05 something like that um, that's coming up at um, 8.1 so uh, pretty close so certainly from a fairly low 4.7 up to uh, over 8 meg um, the range that hobbyists are going to use it in um, it's doing absolutely fine now I'm going to um, just point out something else to you on the leads. The um, red lead, the positive, is um, absolutely fairly normal um, multimeter lead. Uh, the black lead has got um, a little button there and um, that little button uh, has quite what I think is quite a useful function. So let's now go back to our 4.7 ohm resistor. We'll let it settle. So it's just settling there at about 4.79. So I'm just going to press that button. You won't see that. And hopefully the microphone will pick this up. 4.78 ohm. And again. 4.92 ohm. Uh, so it'll speak the value to you. And I'm sure there's some of you out there saying, well, I don't care. I don't want to know. Yep. Yeah, OK, fine. Um, don't use it then. Uh, there's been quite a lot of amateur radio transmitters that have had the ability to speak the contents of the display for many years and that's because amateur radio is quite popular with with visually impaired people so there's a potential here if you if your eyesight's not so good but you want to do some hobby electronics um, you know that might just be quite handy the other obvious thing is you don't need to look at the meter to to hear the results so let's see how it copes with uh, that larger value resistor. 8.113 megohm. 8.102 megohm. So there you go. I personally think that's quite um, quite a handy facility. Right, let's move on to capacitance. Okay, the claimed capacitance range is from uh, nine nanofarads way up to about um, uh, 10 millifarads. So I'm going to start with this one, which is. Um, fairly ancient microcapacitor supposed to be 420 picofarads um, so well below the the range so let's see how she she copes with that and yeah that's that's pretty good really if i can get my hand around to that button on the black let's see what the uh, chinese lady thinks of it 0 0.400 nanofarad yep there you go speaks that nicely so a value that it should deal with uh, a lot easier uh, 2 nanofarads, let's try that. 2.130 nanofarad. Um, and that's uh, the 0.22 nanofarad capacitor, so yeah, okay. And we've got an electrolytic here, so I'm making sure that I've got the polarity right. Now it'll take it a moment to establish what this is. Um, and it's now saying uh, 478 microfarads, this is supposed to be 470. 478.3 microfarad. Um, so it's correctly identifying those capacitors pretty well. Uh, let's go on to um, to diode. This is continuity. I'll quickly show you that. Over range. 0 0.00 ohm. Um, I think I was pressing the button there when I shouldn't be. There we go. Sorry. Apologies. That's it. So it picks that up pretty quickly. So if we go on to diode, uh, get the diode there. Got a small signal diode here, so I think it's a 1N4001. Um, so in reverse condition, we're getting nothing, as you might surprised, not be surprised. And in forward bias, if I can get my fingers correctly on, there we go, get the probes actually onto the connector. So, so 0.62, which is the about right for the forward um, junction voltage of a, of a silicon diode. Let's try this blue LED. So, yeah, 2.59 volts forward, 
Uh, let's just see what it makes of it reverse. It should make nothing of it. There you go. So that's your capacitance and your diodes. I think it um, it does that rather well. Uh, let's now move on to frequency. Okay, so I've got the instrument attached to my Siglent STG 1032X signal generator. Uh, I've got it set to, to 50 hertz at uh, one volt peak to peak. So I'll turn the output on and correctly identifying um, 50 hertz there. I'm just flicking between 49.99 and 50, so I think that's near enough for jazz. And uh, one volt peak to peak is, as it's correctly identifying here, is 0.707. Uh, volts RMS so it's uh, doing that rather well if I move on to the millivolt range I'm going to get a an over scale now because um, 200 millivolts AC is the maximum so I'm just going to enter um, 100 uh, if I can do this millivolts peak to peak and that should give us yep there you go 70.8 um, uh, millivolts so again it's doing the correct rms and it's also identifying frequency no problem if i now move to the next setting here i just get frequency um and uh, apologies for my not being terribly good at um driving the uh, signal generator so if i go on to 500 kilohertz there we go yeah um and hopefully you can hear that 499.9 kilohertz so again, it's correctly uh, reading out the value. Now the stated frequency response is up to six megahertz. So let's just enter uh, five megahertz and see where we go to. And um, probably needs a little bit more voltage, I suspect, to do that. So let's make that one um, uh, volt peak to peak. Yeah, there we go. So it's correctly picking up um, 500, uh, 5 megahertz and the stated uh, maximum is actually 6 megahertz. It does do that. Um, again, we've got that very slight minus error, but it is for all intents and purposes. Um, 6 megahertz. 5.999 megahertz. And it will actually go certainly up to 6.5. Um, but it doesn't go as far as 7. When you get to about 6.7, it sort of falls off the top. It is doing 6.7 there at the moment. 6.699 megahertz. So, again, nice frequency counter up to about um, 6 and a bit megahertz. And seems to do that um, quite nicely. So, can't, uh, can't fault that. So, that's uh, resistance, capacitance, diodes. And you've seen a bit of uh, AC voltage. Again, moving the contacts across here to give us uh, uh, current we can do um, both current and voltage and I'm not going to bore you with that but it certainly um, does those fine according to my measurements here okay just while we've got the machine set up with frequency just want to show you one other thing and that is the app that you can download to use with the meter you can obviously see that there on my uh, mobile phone um, correctly displaying uh, what it says on the display and also gives you um, a graphical representation so if I just um, step the frequency down in 100 kilohertz steps there you can hopefully see that um, the graph is uh, auto scaling and then continues to um, sort of tick along now the app does all sorts of things um, and you can pretty much control the meter from it. Uh, I particularly like the uh, share facility here because you can essentially uh, send the screen um, somewhere, which is uh, very useful, very useful for video makers, or useful if you're using it um, in college or school and you want to keep a um, screen grab of, uh, of your results. So yeah, it does all sorts of things. Um, allows you to change mode as well. I'm in um, frequent uh, frequency here. So it'll allow me to um, move to capacitance. It's going to be very confused by capacitance here because I've got um, uh, two megahertz being fed into the into the leads at the moment. But you uh, you get the general idea. So that's um, Q 
quite a nice uh, use of the um, uh, app, the app and the the Bluetooth link between the two uh, the two machines. And I think w what else I would say is uh, that the app can be downloaded from the Zotec website. Uh, there's a QR code that takes you there. Um, obviously, the phone will start warning you. Are you happy to install a third-party app? Only do that if you're comfy. I've installed it on here. It seems absolutely fine. I've set myself an account up. Again, it required minimum information to do that. And uh, everything seems perfectly okay with that. So this isn't something I'd personally use a lot. But I suspect some people would because uh, the ability to be able to grab a screen and um, keep the display nice and easily is obviously um, very handy. And um, although the up update rate is not particularly fast, it would allow you, for instance, to, if you've got a slowly changing voltage, it would actually allow you to um, to sort of track that on the display, should you um, uh, so wish to do. So that's the app, and I think that's um, rather a nice feature of the Bluetooth, um, and I think it works really well um, between the machine. So if I uh, change mode here to ohms, um, very quickly the app will pick up, I've gone there, and it's now showing me um, the resistance display. Okay, well there you have the ZT5566 SE from Zotec. Um, I think it's uh, quite a nice machine. Um, appreciate that um, sometimes this type of meter can have its critics. Uh, it seems perfectly adequate for a hobbyist, or if you're using it for, for school or college, something like that. Um, I particularly like the larger display. Being um, an older person, I find it nice and easy to read, and I quite like the, the Bluetooth features too. Um, particularly like the fact that it'll speak measurements to you. If you've got your probes inside something and you don't want to look up at the display, um, you can still uh, get the information without having to look away from wherever it is that you're, uh, you've got your probe points. So I like that. Um, and I think the app will certainly appeal um, to the younger generation as well, particularly the fact that it allows you to get uh, screen grabs of your data, which you could then obviously import and use with assignments if you were using it for school or college or something like that. So all in all, a uh, nice bit of kit. So thanks to Zotec for sending me that. Uh, in the description below, you'll find uh, a link to it. Um, and there's a link to an Amazon page and there's uh, the full specifications on that page so you can uh, read all the details without me boring you by testing um, every single thing. But I think, yeah, more than capable for what it is at the price point um, and uh, gets a thumbs up from me. Thanks very much for watching. Um, hope to see you on the next video.